Well, with the cold weather, I wasn't expecting a crowd, but boy, was I wrong. Wow, it's great to see everybody. Uh, we're going to start out with some recognitions. If I may, I would just like to thank everybody as we have two board members getting ready to um, leave their positions, Don and Lisa. I wanted to be able to take the opportunity this, this evening to help them understand and see how they have um, helped our district grow and the influence they've had in our mission statement with inspiring individuals to learn, grow, and give. So as we go through these recognitions and, and um, some of these uh, very wonderful moments with with different individuals in the room don and lisa thank you for your support because you are very much a part of what everybody's going to share this evening i'd like to also thank don and lisa uh, it's been a pleasure working with both of them as i said earlier the uh, neat thing about being on the board is developing new friendships and uh, got to know both of them better and consider them my friends and uh, just want to thank both of you again on behalf of the board. Anybody else in? Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we have our Lily. Adam, if you would um, share Emma Feldman and uh, Lily Scholar and how all that unfolds. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping Emma's here some. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, proud to recognize Emma Feldman this evening. Emma was the, uh, just named the Lily Scholar for Fulton County for this school year, uh, so that's a really prestigious honor for her. Uh, a few things about Emma is that she is a young lady that excels at seemingly everything. Uh, she is outstanding at academics. She's a state qualifying athlete. Uh, she's active in the robotics club and student council, and I'm sure that there's like 20 other organizations that Emma is very active in as well. So she is a, uh, a great role model for us to hold up to younger students in our corporation as uh, what can happen if you maximize your potential because she's a young lady that gets after it in every area and everybody at Rochester High School is very impressed and proud of her. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, Emma, do you mind sharing what your future plans are or what you're thinking at this oh, point? Yeah. Um, I'm sure so they can I change. I actually had three colleges picked out, and two are out of state and one was in state. So I'll be going to Purdue University next year to the College of Engineering and studying either chemical or mechanical engineering. Thank you. And I have to share, Emma was one of the first when I went to the middle school as a principal. Emma was one of the first there, and she was so kind and gracious to me as I learned my new position. So I agree with everything Adam said. She's just a standout young lady. That, everybody should em emulate so thank you Emma. thank you um, is there any way if you were a former teacher of emma and i also like to say dr and mrs feldman because they are all we all know how important the parents and teachers are especially parents but if you were a former teacher or obviously the parents could we ask them to stand and give them a round sure, of applause absolutely Congratulations, Emma. <coughs> Good pick on the school, too. <laughs> Boil her up. I, I won't give my opinion on you. Yeah, no <laughs> I was going to say we're going to have a fight here. <laughs> okay. Miss Horn, if you would come forward, please. Yeah, if you would come forward. Sometimes I get these envelopes on my desk and you can tell that they are very official envelopes and they come from the state and it's always just a little bit concerning when you uh, start to unwrap those. But this is one of those really neat ones in that um, Governor Pence and Superintendent Glenda Ritz wanted to recognize you as an Indiana educator and for your generational service to education and that you've also had other family members who have been in the business. So if you would share that, we would most certainly appreciate it. I guess it all started with my grandfather, H.N. Harvey, way back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. I think he retired from Pioneer, it was Royal Center then, Pioneer High School in the 30s. I don't know when exactly. Uh, I followed in his footsteps. I taught for 41 years here in the Rochester schools. Uh, my brother taught at Fairfield High School for 33 years. My daughter is a professor at IUPUI now, 
and my younger daughter is a teacher at Argus High School, and she's taught for 22 years, and uh, I guess we're just a line of educators. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Yes, thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. Kay and Arnold are also my neighbors out there on the farm next to me. Known them a long time. <laughs> and that's east of 31. <laughs> that's right, east. Okay, fifth grade. Fifth grade, Leslie Strem, if you would share. Sometimes we have these really unique and um, wonderful things going on across the district. And <coughs> I'm not always aware of those. And so I want to thank Mrs. Strem for sharing with us what her fifth grade class did in combination when we talk about giving to the community. Would you mind sharing what your what the fifth grade did and how that unfolded? Sure. I am a fifth grade teacher at Rochester School. <coughs> I'm also the head of the student council. I have four of my 12 student council members here. Our big service project this year was to raise money for the Miracle Tree. We picked a family and between our fifth grade parents, we brought in approximately $575. Um, my student council, Mr. Bernacki and I went shopping for the gifts. My student council wrapped them, we got those delivered. We did have some extra money, so we also donated around $75 to the Christmas baskets. And I would like my four that did come to introduce themselves. I'm Robert Bravo. I'm Kate. I'm Lily Bunny. I'm Kate Johnson. And this is just one of the many service projects that we will be doing this year. So thank you for recognizing us. Oh, thank you for your work on that. Thank you. Thank you. And if you need to, if you need to get the kiddos home, I understand that. I can almost assure you, we won't have a delay or cancellation tomorrow. So. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks for coming in. Great job. Mr. Haas and the middle school received some exciting <coughs> news this week, or I guess it was last week. We're we're on Monday now, so. If you'd like to share. Yeah, um, everybody else has been kind of quick and I've been asked to share with the board before, but this time you've asked me to share something that I'm really passionate about. So I have a little bit of a presentation. I'll try and go quick. I'll be honest, I didn't write anything down. So I'm just talking about it from, uh, I guess, I don't know if you want to say from the heart or just deep in the mind, something that, and I'm not just talking from myself. I'm representing 58 people that are currently employed at the middle school, whether it's our kitchenettes, whether it's our custodians. Um, members of my leadership team are here, so if you have questions when I'm done talking, you can be more than welcome to ask us. Um, uh, what was it? A month into my principalship at the middle school, Jana called me and said, hey, the leader of the Indiana Middle Level Education Association wants to come visit your school. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. So we had some kids lead, them around, lead her around. And then she really started to put pressure on me whenever I saw her to become a school to watch. Um, what is a school to watch? It's an initiative by the National Forum of the Middle Grades Reform to identify schools who are doing things the right way. Um, there's four criteria. You have to be academically um, excellent, socially equitable, developmentally responsible, and then the last one, you have to have the structures and processes in place to support the first three. So that is some stuff that we looked at as a staff um, when they're looking at academic excellence they're obviously talking about the standards your curriculum what your schedule looks like and how your recruitment process of teachers goes so that is what academic excellence is um, when we went through this process which i'll talk about here in a minute they gave us about a six page report back that has probably 15 to 20 positives in each category and then three to six areas of improvement for the category to get this um, going. If you want to go ahead. Uh, developmentally responsive. This is where Mr. Kramer comes in a lot. Uh, our relationship with Fort County, developing proper citizens, um, so forth. The opportunities we offer as far as academic teams, sports teams, and uh, different clubs and so forth. Setting up that physical, social, emotional, and intellectual development. We are the middle school. The social, emotional is amazing. When they come into us as still elementary kids in sixth grade 
when they leave us, they're becoming young men and young women, going to the high school um, and so forth. So that's what developmentally responsive is. Uh, social equity, <coughs> holding all our student, students accountable, whether it's a special needs student, whether it's our student who is at the very high end of the educational environment, or somebody who's right in the middle of the average student. Holding all those expectations equal to those students, getting everybody to an equal ground as far as that goes, whether that's socially, academically, physically, and so forth. Uh, the rules are clear, fair, and consistent as we go through that process. That's very important when it comes to the social side of things. <coughs> this is important, the scheduling. Do we allow our teachers to meet together? Do we allow our students to meet in different groups to make them successful as well? Those are your structures and processes. Do we have a shared vision? The, at our middle school, it's all about relationship building. It's something that Cassie and I preach. It's something that the staff has taken a hold of and we've ran with, and that is what is driving the success of Rochester Middle School. Okay, so what the process was. Again, it started with Shirley Wright. She came last September, so about a year and a half ago. Uh, we had kids who were currently freshmen led her around our building. She saw all the exemplars that we had on the walls, and we were demonstrating of our students, and she was adamant that we could be a school to watch. <clears throat> and this is not a decision I could make lightly. So I went to my leadership team. It's a representative of everybody in our building. Uh, we threw around the idea. Then we attended a training for Schools to Watch, which was in this, uh, this past August. Once we went to the training, we decided that we were going to jump in and go for it. And then that's when the intensive process began. It started with a self-study, which is provided by the University of Illinois that the Indiana Middle Level Education Association paid for. Um, we did this self-study. We got the feedback. Then the next week at PD, we did what is called a gallery walk for those of you who maybe aren't in education, basically we had the four categories up on, or not up, they were on a table on big white pieces of paper. The teachers were in different groups. They walked around and put down ideas of how we met all this criteria that we had to meet. And once we got down to gallery walk, started the application process. The application was not easy. The individual sitting back here, especially Mrs. Atkinson and Mrs. Paul with their English lingo typing it out, made me look really, really good. So um, it ended up being probably 12 pages typed out plus another 10 pages of data collection that we had to provide to the IMLEA to even get a site visit. Um, I think they've only got three new schools that they're willing to even give a site visit to. And then they have three or four that are looking for redesignation. So that is what we were just blessed to get a site visit. Then on December 8th, they came and did a site visit. <clears throat> During the site visit, they met with Mrs. Vance, a couple of our school board members. They met with a set of parents. Now, we didn't just choose our honor roll parents. We have parents who have kids at ASE that came in. We have parents of special needs students who came in. So we gave them a good perception of what we had as far as at our mess. And our parents made us look great, so we appreciated that. We had the business members. Um, we had Joe McCarter, Corey Good, I'm gonna, Mrs. Arndt came in uh, to represent the Optimist Club. We had eight or nine business community partners that came in, and they did a tremendous job representing RMS as well, so we appreciate that. And then last week, in the middle of the formal Christmas dinner that we have at RMS, Mrs. Hayes came out with a note, and it said, Shirley Wright, who's the director of all this, and her phone number, and she refused to leave me a voicemail. So I asked Cassie, I was like, ah, oh, do I make the call or not? And we couldn't wait any longer. So I went and made the call, and we were blessed as RMS to be designated as a school to watch. What does that mean for RMS? It means we're gonna be one of 15 schools in Indiana, one of about 400 in the nation that have earned this prestigious award. Um, and I'll be honest, it's something that our staff put a ton of time into uh, we put a lot of information down, we've adjusted, we've grown, we're still going to be growing, but it is huge for us to receive the recognition. As we go forward um, with this, there's a lot of stuff that now comes onto our plate. It involves presenting at the National Conference in Washington, D.C. It involves presenting at the State Conference. It involves allowing people to come visit us and see all the great things that we are doing. 
It also involves us that we can go see what these other schools to watch are doing and grow from them as well. And like I said, we got great feedback. The feedback is tremendous. Um, it's definitely detailed, so that was awesome. The thing is, it's not a one-time thing. It's every three years we have to go through this process and continue to grow our building. And we are um, going to be an example of what you want to be across the state, which is huge for Rochester's schools and the community as a whole. Um, Kissler, if you want to go ahead. Here's a map of the schools to watch. You can see there's nobody between the school in Plymouth and then all the way down there in Boone County at Lebanon. So we're going to fall right in the middle there in that big white area. So there's a good chance a lot of those schools will come to us. We might be the school where all the schools to watch principals come and meet. Um, Ryan Nikolai from Tri-West, um, Jeff Brooks from Hebron. We've already developed a great relationship. This collaboration piece is going to be tremendous for the growth of Rochester Middle School moving forward. Um, I guess that's a synopsis and brief as I could be. But I really wanted to stretch uh, or stress what a great honor it is to represent the 58 members of our teachers and staff at the middle school that have put in the time and effort to become a school to watch. I don't know if you have any questions. I know that Mr. Meyer was one of the board members that came and he got the psych team fired up when he said, why do we even care to be a school to watch in Rochester? And that hit a nerve with them. What <laughs> part they were. <laughs> That's how they took it. <laughs> yeah, I blame Brad, I'll be honest. I said, oh, he's a state trooper, it's all right. And they go, no, he was nice. It was the pastor that was really honest. <laughs> but now I appreciate it because I knew you, that meant you got a perspective that you could bring back to the board so that the board and the community could understand um, what an honor it is to become a member of the School to Watch family <coughs> and how it's going to help RMS grow to be what we want to be in the future. Oscar, do you mind introducing your teacher leaders, please? Okay. Yeah, you got the Mr. State golf coach. At <laughs> oh, wait, he teaches social studies. He's not a golf coach. Uh, Mrs. Brown, she's a state swimming coach, but she teaches <laughs> algebra. And during the site visit, it was funny. They walked into Mrs. Brown's room. They didn't know where they were at. And she goes, don't worry, you're in the algebra class. And then they all kind of tucked their tails and walked out. <laughs> so, yeah, Mrs. Atkinson, I do want to stress when it came to the writing portion, Mrs. Atkinson was huge because the first application we had finished, then we realized, oh, wait, we may not have done it exactly right. So then we spent a good six hours revamping what we had to get it done. So I appreciate that effort. She teaches sixth grade English. Uh, I don't know if you want to call me the right hand or left hand or no hands, and this is the person that makes me look really good. My assistant principal, Mrs. Murphy. Um, yeah, she's priceless in what I do. And Mrs. Paul is our seventh grade English and high ability district coordinator. So she's a wealth of information when it comes to enrichment pieces that we do at the middle school. So I appreciate them. Mr. Kramer, our guidance counselor, is on there. And Mr. Bernardis represents our related arts teachers <coughs> on our leadership team. They are instrumental in the process as well. But they couldn't be here tonight. But, yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations to everybody. That's quite an honor to bring them to our community. And it, uh, I can tell it took a team effort, and that's what our community is good about, working as a team. And it, uh, I appreciate it and thank everyone that was uh, involved in getting this honor. So great job. Yeah, um, at this time, our guests are free to go, unless you want to sit through the rest of the meeting. Uh, Purdue has already tipped off, so I know everybody will want to leave. We don't have little kids at home. We're, we're just fine right here. <laughs> <laughs> they keep it up all day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We won't tell that the meeting gets over. This meeting's going to last till 10. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we'll move along to consent items. Uh, we have the minutes of the November 21st public hearing and regular board meeting, uh, certification of November 21st executive session, and the minutes of the December 8, 2016 study session. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll accept the motion to approve. So moved. 
Okay, motion by Jenny. I'll second. And second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right hand, please. Okay, motion carried, 7-0. Thank you. <coughs> Financial report, well. So we've got, um, on item one, we have a claim stock at 10,480 to 10,632, totaling $2,028,003.12. We've got a few payrolls on here. We've got the 1125 of 16, that's November 25th. Payroll was $533,579.29. And then the December 9th payroll was $421,895.74. Um, so on the, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's a payroll thing. So was, were there stipends that were paid on that first one or? There were, it was, um, thanks Jenny. The, um, per the collective bargaining agreement, uh, the first round of stipends that were um, set out and established in the collective bargaining agreement that was paid out on the 1125th payroll, causing it to be slightly more than it normally is. That would be the first half, the, the first, first half, exactly. semester's worth of anybody who is involved in an ECA and then the second half would fall um, probably in April, end of April mm -hmm. or beginning of May once they've completed their ECAs. So it was the ECA or was it part of the collective bargaining? It's the one, yeah, they're one. It's all in there. the ECAs that were in, in the, the collective, collective bargaining. bargaining. Gotcha. Thank you. Let's see, funds report for general fund. We started November with four hundred and seventy-four thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars and sixty-seven cents. We had a million four hundred and twenty-four thousand four hundred and seventy dollars and eighty-seven cents worth of revenues. Expenditures total $1,484,142.60 uh, worth of expenditures, leaving an ending balance of $414,682.94. And again, general fund is our salaries, wages, uh, benefits, and typical operating costs for supplies. Our debt service fund started at $1,860,860.72. We had $35,043.53 worth of receipts, um, $26,323.28 worth of expenditures, leaving us an ending balance of $1,869,588.90. Uh, I'm sorry, $1,869,588.97. So um, we had um, property tax replacement credits um, were the revenues, and then we did um, through the 2016 budget that was advertised last year, um, there was $26,323.28 that was um, advertised and allocated to help out with the unreimbursed um, textbooks that we don't, for the funding that we don't get for, from the state. So we moved some, um, used some of that debt service money to help fund our textbooks. Capital Projects Fund, uh, we started with $361,073.56 had $16,921.53 worth of receipts. Our expenditures for the month were $79,710.76, leaving us an ending balance of $298,284.33. Again, CPF is where we pay a lot of our technology, salaries, and benefits, um, and we get revenue from property tax re replacement credits as well. Transportation fund started with $913,352.31. Our receipts total $8,494.17. We had $59,616.67 worth of expenditures, and our ending cash balance left us with $862,229.81. Again, um, revenue more from some local property tax replacement credit dollars, and we pay our bus bus drivers uh, salaries and benefits, and also the repair and maintenance on the buses out of our transportation fund. Bus replacement started with three hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred and eighty-one dollars and sixty-eight cents. We had twenty-two thousand one hundred and seventy dollars and ninety-five cents worth of receipts. No expenditures because the buses are coming; <laughs> they're right around the corner. Um, and leaving us with a balance of $350,752.63. Any questions on the fund report? And then we also have a resolution to close out the 2016 year end um, upon board approval. It's a formality to um, um, get approval to proceed with the year end close. Okay. <clears throat> 
Well, first we'll uh, uh, approve the financial report, then we'll do the resolution. So we'll need a motion to approve the uh, financial report as well read. read. I move that we <coughs> approve the financial report as read. Okay, motion by Lisa. I second that. And a second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay, hey, motion carries 7 0. Uh, okay, now we'll move on to the uh, resolution to close the 2016 year in. Have a, uh, let me read that, or you want to explain what um, it's all about then? So, through the year in process, um, we, um, the resolution, it talks about there's necessary transfers that will be needed to be made from one budget classification to another major budget classification. In, all of our um, tax funds, including the general fund. So um, what that pretty much um, entails out is um, appropriations. Some might have negative appropriations, some might have positive, and it's a technical process of um, cleaning it up so everything ends at zero or positive <coughs> note. So, um, and then, you know, the, the program budget classifications are, are each of our programs are, um, for instance, on the general fund we have we have elementary, you know, buildings, our middle school buildings, and our high school buildings. So it um, just cleans up everything, so it's nice and tidy at year end, and allows us to um, also make sure that we're not overexpended in any area as well. And working within our um, budgetary allowances that we've received from our Department of Local Government Finance. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to. Uh, the close of 2016 year end. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. Second. And second by Brad. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7 0. Thanks, Val. Thank you. And part of what we do too is new board members come on and we look at budget and finance training. Val will make sure that um, we show where those line items switch so that it's completely transparent at that time as we lead the new <coughs> board members into school finance and the beast that it is. <laughs> Putting it nicely. Okay, moving along. Donations. Gerald Fields, FFA, $3,000. Uh, we have an anonymous two middle school students circle the state registrations for $54. Rochester Optimist Club, students in need, seven pair of boots and four pair of shoes. Beacon Credit Union, First Robotics, $100. Optimist Club, Rochester Manitals, $250. Fulton County Chamber of Commerce, High School Band, $100. Kroger, RMS Book Fair, one case of plastic bags. Uh, anonymous Ro Rochester Middle School National Junior Honor Society $37 women of First Christian Church high school middle school girls undergarments anonymous Dan Bailey's classroom or athletic teams that he coaches $1,500 and Richard Belcher RMS etiquette etiquette dinner $250 are there any other additions Nope. I always look at candy at this point in time to make <laughs> sure. Okay, we need a motion to approve the donations. So moved. Brad, uh, Brad got, okay. I'll second that. And second by Steve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carries 7 0. Thanks again to everybody that donates. It's, it's amazing. Each meeting we go through <laughs> thousands of dollars, really, mm -hmm. and uh, it's greatly appreciated because every bit of it helps. Okay, now we've uh, moving on to our policies, second readings and third readings. Uh, Jenny, you want to fill us in on? Sure. Um, I'll start with the third reading. These are several that we've discussed multiple times. We have 2410, 2461, we are striking because it's a redundant one, 2430. It was a formality of adding the athletic director as the person needed in, in the particular situation of determining eligibility. 3120.08, 63.20, and 83.90. And those have been posted on our website for review. So I'd ask that those be read for, for adopted. We've read it now three times. Okay. All right, this time. Uh, <coughs> After we've had, we've had three readings on these policies, uh, I need a motion to adopt. So moved. 
Oops. He had several. Yeah. Don? Motion <laughs> by Don. Second? I'll second. Second by Lisa. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried. Sims. Okay, second readings? Okay, and these second readings are two that involved more discussion, and we um, still welcome input on those. One is policy 8390. It is about animals on school property. And um, as we have discussed, most of this is um, statute to keep and to then guide our, our staff. Part of what we heard we're discussing doesn't necessarily go with this or isn't answered or solved in this policy because they're, whenever there are competing interests of a student who needs a a service animal and one that cannot be around service animals, but this doesn't really um, tackle that. It's more about the requirements of having animals on school property, whether they are uh, service animals or whether they are classroom animals, whether they are uh, police dogs or um, maybe community members that bring animals in for something special that there are licensing requirements, vaccination requirements that are spelled out in here. So we definitely want to make sure that if this is just our second reading, but shall that be adopted that we make sure our principals know because I know that a lot of times people do want to bring in animals and this way they have a policy to be able to look back to. The other one is on advertising commercial activity sponsorship, sponsorships and naming rights. That is policy 9700.01. There are um, many options that we look at. Uh, our school does do advertising, does participate in that, and so uh, we encourage people to look through and see if these advertising guidelines are um, consistent with what they believe is best for Rochester schools. We have looked at that and feel, we feel that after some discussion, what we've presented uh, reflects Rochester schools values, and ultimately most of the time it just said that the, the superintendent and talking with the board can make those determinations. So that, again, those are for both. Both of those are for second reading. Uh, I think we have most of the principals here. I'd like to ask their opinions on animals in their buildings, uh, what you've dealt with, any problems, or any things you'd like to see as far as guidelines, or, or has it been even been an issue? I don't know. We have one classroom pet currently at the middle school, and that's a huge benefit for our eighth grade students. They truly enjoy the bearded dragon, but um, as long as the animals are vaccinated and everything from there, I think we're okay with what we have going on. Would you say the, uh, I mean, depending on allergies that, that comes into play, uh, might, might not be in that classroom, but biggest things depending on the type of animal as a pet yeah. as far as bringing bringing pets in we have quite a few uh, requests for outside um, entities to bring pets in for various reasons um, you know it's usually a one-time deal we scrub our allergy lists before you know kids participate in that but like you know when we have the petting zoo and things like that for the carnival um, there's some times where uh, they're learning about chickens hatching, and the, um, so there's there's chicks, and um, you know those are those are not permanent animals, but we we just use the current policy that we had to you know determine what what is allowed and what's not, and, and we haven't had any issues up to this point. Mm -hmm. But we we do spend quite a bit of time double checking. Automatic given people are just bring, bring in the mm -hmm. process. Okay. And we don't really have any outside people making requests for animals to be brought in, but we do have a couple of classroom pets, fish or turtles, things like that. The teacher makes a request. I love it as long as they we double check the allergies, as Jason mentioned. You know, as long as it's good in that classroom, I'm good with it. And, um, have any service animals or anything like that. So just a couple of small classroom pets. Okay. Adam, do you have any? Uh, similar to them, we have in our biology room some rep 
reptiles, and fish, and further than that. We don't have anything. We haven't had any issues in the past that I know of. Okay. Good. Appreciate the input, you guys. Thanks. Okay. Let's second read. Thanks, Jenny. Jenny puts a lot of work in the, these policies. And we just had our big oh, meeting with Jen, Tom McKay. Jenny has taken over and done a much better job. Oh. <laughs> much better at that than I am. I'm going to miss You're... you, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to the personnel report. For hiring, we have Eric Thomas, substitute for Jennifer Zartman's maternity leave at the high school, Spanish teacher, January 4th through March 17th of 2017. Uh, Paul Helstern, substitute for Brittany Grant's maternity leave, fifth grade teacher, February 27th through April 24th of 2017. Family medical leave, Amy Noel, uh, December 19th through January 9th. We have retirement, Tom Hunter, middle school building tech, effective December 9th, 2016. And Larry Kripe, bus driver, effective December 2nd, 2016. In sports, we have Leah Hilder, Hilderlander, uh, middle school sixth grade <coughs> girls basketball assistant coach. Then uh, we have for bus drivers, Elaine Wojcicka, is that right? Uh, route bus driver and Don Meyer, not our Don Meyer. <laughs> I was like, route bus driver. We thought he was. Thought it was. That asked too. several times. Me too. I thought, okay, he's getting off the board. He looks like he's <laughs> okay, and that's that's our list for the personnel report. Uh, we have a motion to approve it. Don Meyer would like to approve the personnel. Okay. Good. <laughs> have a second. I second that. Yeah, second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay, most carried, 7-0. Okay, the release of performance grant funds. There are state designated funds that are released <clears throat> in the month of December, not always by the deadline that the state uh, sets up, but once um, the state does release those funds, we have 20 days to get those out to teachers. It is a joint process with RCTA and um, outlining the stipulations to make sure that we meet the criteria that's outlined by the grants. They outline very specific criteria as to who is eligible. And then through that, you also have to make a determination between highly effective and effective teachers who may be um, privy to these grant funds. So we are asking uh, the board to help us or to approve the release of those funds. Brenda has worked diligently on this. The funds were uh, deposited in our account on Friday. So that began the count day. And again, per the state regulations, we have 20 days to release those. We are hoping with your approval that we will get those out to teachers on this <coughs> Friday's pay. Um, and uh, I believe, and Val's double checked, and Brenda has that we meet all the criteria, and they've got those ready to go for Friday. Okay. Superintendent business. Um, do we do we need an approval for the release of the grant funds? You approve it. Okay. We need a motion to approve uh, the release of the grant funds. So moved. Okay. Motion by Brad. Second. And second by Jenny. Any discussion? All in favor? Carry seven zero. If I may, then we. I'm sorry. Just wondered how much it is. The overall amount. We'll have to look at. Yep, I can get that. I would outside of the grant funds. The grant does not allow for administrators who meet the same criteria and who may be deemed highly effective or effective to receive the same stipend. And I would respectfully ask the board to honor those on the admin team who meet those qualifications and met the highly um, effective or effective standard from last year's service to the district. Um, out of the general fund, it would be approximately $3,400. I know value gave me a different number, um, but it would be around that $3,400 mark outside of the general fund for those on the administrative team who would meet the same criteria. Does that include you? No, it does not. If it were to include me, it would bump it up to a 3858. Can we do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. we have. Yes, we can. <laughs> We've done that before. I would like to do that again. I think, I think that sounds like a motion. 
That's why I asked I the question because yeah. I knew she wouldn't put herself in. Nope. I know. <laughs> Okay, I make a motion that we release the performance grant funds, including our administrators and our superintendent. Okay. I second that. Motion by Lisa and second by Steve. And discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for Thank supporting you. them. Um, superintendent business I have in front of you and Jason if you wouldn't mind speaking and then Adam in regards and uh, Jim Swank in regards to the construction project just a couple of um, classroom notations from Columbia and their perception of how well things are going they they've been kind of displaced and move out moved out to paradise so you have a couple of their emails in front of you and Jason if you want to share your perspective on that project so far sure uh, we are now uh, four rooms complete and um, that's four classrooms that have been out into paradise and, and have moved back in. Uh, from what we're hearing from the teachers, uh, we've got all Ted's getting bursitis here with his elbow trying to get you to stand up, Mr. Snyder. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 he knows. He knows when I stand up, I talk a little longer. So <laughs> know what's out. We can throw um, No, but we are um, the the sound. Uh, level is is almost zero much quieter uh, the heat regulation uh, has been more consistent um, and the the teachers just have an overall sense of a, a much cleaner air environment uh, in the entire um, in the build well in the uh, in the rooms that have those complete uh, I know Jim can back me up on this one our old heating units uh, though I don't know how many motors we've had burn up in the last probably six weeks but it was definitely a I mean the time to do that because uh, I don't know if we could keep up with constantly replace it and we usually have one or probably about one a week maybe one every two weeks that have, have gone down we've got spare parts obviously from the construction uh, we're we're taking those those parts and, and doing that but we've had a lot of that going on um, I the everything's going great the um, Construction guys that are working there are fabulous. Uh, they are very uh, informative. In fact, they were, I hadn't even been in the building this morning for about four minutes and they were already in my office just letting me know what they were doing for the day, wanting to know what the status was with kids coming in because they can get some different work done uh, when, it's, when there's not kids around. And uh, very, com they, they just keep us in the loop. And I think the biggest thing is uh, their first priorities are the students and the, and the teachers in terms of when they're in the building, uh, making sure that they're not, um, affecting them and they do a great job on that uh, the other thing I just mentioned with with them and Terry as well is they've been very helpful in scheduling uh, we had some things scheduled for this uh, this winter uh, and over uh, holiday or Christmas break uh, that we rescheduled they were going to be doing some work on some common areas um, office stuff like that and we thought we'd rather have them work on classrooms because if we can get some classrooms done, that would be less of an impact on the students, less students having to go out into that building, and we can relocate in the office at any time uh, and be flexible on that. They're willing to do that for us, so we're hoping to get a couple of classrooms done over break um, and then not even have to send some kids out to, or some classes out to Paradise uh, when they return, and, and that's that's huge on the flexibility piece to do that. So Paradise is portable classrooms, not Paradise the truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Paradise is, uh, is is doing well too, so it's it's uh, haven't had any uh, any issues. Heat's working. Um, kids are doing great. Staff's doing great. First first grade, I feel really bad for them. The teachers they had to kind of be right out of the gates, and uh, they had to kind of you know do the trial for us of getting out there and figuring out what you know what was the best plan for us, of getting kids in and out. They've done a fantastic job, just been super flexible and uh, real, real happy for them that uh, they're going to get theirs done and move <coughs> on. But they've, they've been great, really helpful. So, does anybody have any questions on Columbia? All right. Adam, do you mind speaking for the high school? Uh, the high school has four classrooms uh, that will be done at the end of this week. Uh, the first four that were, that were under construction and then we'll then move on to the next four classrooms. Uh, so far, since they started, everything seems to be on schedule and working well. It has not been a disruption to our, our school environment at all. 
They've also started changing out water fountains so that we have water fountains that work uh, and don't leave water all over the floor, so that's really nice to have. Uh, but for the most part, it's been uh, as good of an experience as you can have going through something like this. Thank you. So you have water fountains that work now? <laughs> Four so far. <laughs> <laughs> Do the water bottles <laughs> fill the water yeah. bottles, right? Okay, yeah. that is I, like, that, I know that's huge. That's yeah. like big in our world. That <laughs> is <laughs> big in our family. Water, water fountains water bottles. in warmer cold classrooms are good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple thing. Yeah. How about those hot showers? <laughs> hot showers. I'm a simple man. <laughs> Jim, anything you'd like to share as far as construction? I'd just like to say what Jason mentioned. Uh, we have two different companies doing the work, uh, <clears throat> high school in uh, Columbia, but both of them have been extremely professional. They keep us in the loop. Um, anytime I have a question, they stop and answer it. It's, it's really been nice. It's really been nice. They're a group, great group of guys who are doing the work. Very conscientious. Thank you. Um, and, I, and my final parting words um, to Lisa and Dawn, thank you. I hope that tonight you saw some of those things that you have worked diligently on, from construction to Lily Scholars to um, a school that embraces giving back to the community. Thank you to all board members for your support in that endeavor and to, to Don and Lisa as you wrap up your service on the school board. Thank you. Um, at the closing of school tomorrow at 3 o'clock, we're officially on Christmas break. I don't anticipate any delays or cancellations, so I think we can count tomorrow as a day. <laughs> we'll count tomorrow as a day, but thank you. That's all I have. Jan, I have a question about that. Since we missed today, how are finals at the high school working? Adam was sending out, you were texting me first thing this morning trying to figure out oh what my, God, my the, thoughts were. The, the cancellation, sure. I thought, oh, I just yeah. felt bad for y'all, thinking, what are, you, what are they going to do? We have a plan. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I never questioned that. I was just curious how you were going to pull that off. Good enough. Don't worry, he has a plan. <laughs> He's got a plan. I'm good. He tweeted good. the plan earlier today. Did he? Good. Okay, I missed the tweet. Sorry. I'm Would you like for him to go into detail? No. So, okay. no. As long as he's got a plan. He's, he's got, got a plan. plan. He had a plan at eight, eight o'clock this morning. He had his plan ready for awesome. me. So, awesome. Thank you all. Don and Lisa, you have any final words? Or um, I am, I'm very grateful for, for everything that I've learned and get to, gotten to experience and observe in the last four years. I, I will forever hold those four years fondly. Thank you. <laughs> in some ways, uh, 12 years have gone fast. Uh, it has been a privilege, and I want you to know I will continue to pray for Rochester Community Schools. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, both of you. Have any comments from the audience? If not, I'd like to honor Don and uh, Lisa. By Don, would you make a motion to adjourn the meeting? And Lisa, would you second? Mm -hmm. I move we adjourn school board meeting for this evening. Can I second that? Okay, we have a motion by board member Don Meyer to adjourn. Second by Lisa Lee, board, board member. All in favor? Okay, Thanks, most carries. Thanks, Thank guys. You, and for those of you Thanks parents, those parents, you were on TV say, stating that you were here to avoid the avoid the chaos at home, so you may be careful what you walk into. I think you have a couple days before it airs, so you should be okay for a while. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank Merry you. Christmas. I don't do that. Now, were you able to find that number? I think that Christina wanted